All right, so for today's first social network that we're going to deal with, we will deal with Google+. Uh, go ahead and open up any of your favorite web browsers. We've got them all down here. So open any web browser. I'm going to go with Google Chrome. Let's go to the address google.com. Did anyone notice that Google changed their logo? Who hates it? So, Google changed their logo. Google is a big old search engine. It's a big, big, big profitable company. They have their, um, they have various aspects of uh, products and such. Google Search is one of their products. Uh, let's do something here. On Google Search, go ahead and, and search for, let's say, Italian food. Italian food restaurants. Italian food restaurant. Just do some kind of search. So I did a search here, Italian food restaurant. I get results. I'm going to get some ads, of course. And then perhaps you get some sort of call out box that looks like this Cucina Urbana with a star rating. Arrivederci, Bencoto. You might get that, you might not, that's okay you might get a result that, that actually shows a map on the side and some sort of box on the side here that also shows restaurants. You're going to get probably different results than me, that's okay. In any event, I'm getting some results. A little bit to show off here. Italian food restaurants in Chula Vista. The number one result here is one of my company's clients. So it appears right here. Maybe you want that. Maybe you want your company to appear in a nice call-out box like this with a star rating and you know preferential VIP treatment compared to these other ones that look like a plain old result that don't catch as much attention. One of the ways to get this kind of result is to have a profile on Google+. That's why I first talk about Google+. Facebook is the largest social network. It has 1.5 billion users worldwide. I didn't say million, I said billion. The population of the world is 7 billion people. So 1 in 7 people use Facebook globally. So Facebook has a huge reach. And there's, there's a day that we'll talk about in detail about Facebook, of course. Today I'm talking about Google Plus because Google is a product, Google Plus is a product from Google company. And many of their servers are, services are integrated. Their search is integrated with their maps, is integrated with their Google Plus, is integrated with Gmail. They're all related. So Google has the largest uh, amount of traffic on search. People globally, latest statistic is around 62% of global traffic. So hundreds of millions, probably billions of searches go through Google. And then there's other competitors like Bing and Yahoo and AltaVista and AOL. And um, Bing, for example, is at 20%. Only 20%, which is still billions of searches. But Google's got the largest amount of search traffic. And so it would behoove us to then play their game about let's get a, our business on Google+, Plus, also known as Google Local, so that my business appears here more impressively than the rest, that it stands out compared to the competition so that it doesn't look like the plain links that everyone else has. And this is by creating a Google Plus profile, also known as a Google Local profile. So this works best if your business is a physical location where people can go to. But if your business is still, if it doesn't have a physical location, this still helps you getting on Google Plus because Google Plus is so integrated with Google Search. Now, Google Plus is one of the newer social networks. Facebook was invented in, in 2004, so it's uh, over 10 years old now. Um, Twitter in 2006, I believe, so it's about to be 10 years old. And Google Plus in 2011. 
So how many of you before this class have heard of Google Plus? Okay, so a lot of you have. How many of you before this class have used Google Plus? And how many of you within the last month have used Google Plus? Okay, so um, we're going to talk about then and continue to talk about why you want to set up Google Plus if you don't have one and use Google Plus if you do have one because it's so much integrated with all of Google itself. Unfortunately though, just because of sheer momentum, Facebook is the largest network and there's always articles talking about the death of Twitter, the death of Google Plus, the death of Instagram. Just because the momentum of Facebook is so much, I don't think any big network is going to come out to take over Facebook, unfortunately. And then in the interest of full disclosure, personally, I don't like Facebook. I don't like to use it for friends and family. I don't log in. People ask me, why didn't you like my photo on Facebook? I haven't logged in in a month. I don't like Facebook personally. But I put that aside for business purposes, and I do a good job in my company to run Facebook well for clients. And we'll talk about that. So for personal purposes, I don't like Facebook. I love Google Plus and Twitter. Those are the two I love to be on for personal purposes. And so your, your kids, your parents, your friends, your neighbors, everyone's on Facebook. You're not going to convince them, join me on Twitter, join me on Google Plus. They're on Facebook. Momentum. They're not going to get out of Facebook to join you on Google Plus. So we're not going to be worried about, well, I created a Google Plus profile and none of my friends are on it. And I sent them invitations and they're not joining. Don't worry. You're not going to use your friends and family as followers on Google Plus because after all how well can you sustain a business on your friends and family how many times are you gonna sell them again and again and again the same product so don't worry if your friends and family are not on Google Plus you're not gonna convince them anyway let them be happy on Facebook we're gonna reach the millions of people hundreds of millions there's about 300 million users on Google Plus we're gonna convince those people to follow you on Google Plus uh, to look at your posts on Google+, Plus, to click that link to buy your product, to click that link to subscribe to your newsletter, whatever it is you're trying to do online. <clears throat> so I'm just showing here. If you want to appear like this, Google+. Plus. Let's look as a, at an example of a Google+, Plus profile. Let's go to the address google.com slash plus, the plus symbol, Mashable, M-A-S-H-A-A, M-A-S-H-A-B-L-E, uh, google.com slash plus Mashable. Mashable is an online presence that I highly recommend you, you bookmark and visit because they constantly publish great articles on social media, technology, culture, society, SEO, all that great stuff. And they have a presence on all the networks. They're on Google+, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, um, Snapchat, etc. So we should bookmark it, you said? Yeah, on your home computer. <laughs> and come back to it. So Google dot com slash plus mashable and here you'll see their profile on Google Plus they've got some kind of logo the name of their company a link to their company some eye-catching graphic I'm currently looking at their posts all of these networks often have the same sort of concepts maybe named differently but here we've got posts, and there's a post that was published today at 10 a.m. from Mashable. Work hard, play hard. It's got a picture. Engineering student comes home drunk, designs plain like a boss. Mm -hmm. And then we've got another post further down here. Perfect response. Terry Gilliam responds perfectly to the news of his own death. Um, that was at 8 a.m. At 6.30 a.m., another post. Yesterday at 3 p.m., another post. Yesterday at uh, noon, another post. So they're posting content all the time on a regular basis. 
Yes, they have a staff of writers where they can post three things every hour. You probably don't have a staff of writers. That's okay. Um, I'm going to be giving you goals and advice. One of the goals that you want to write down is for any of these social networks, you want to use them at least once a week. So if you created an account on Google Plus a year ago, and you haven't used it in a year, it's not so good. If you haven't used it in a month, that's not so good. So if you, if you make a goal about once a week to use your networks, which includes all the eight that we're going to talk about, that's much better. Even better is to be publishing once a day. But then we're going to get to writer's block and how to deal with that and everything. But this is working out for Mashable because if you look at the top, they have 5.3 million followers. And, they, and their content has been viewed 560 million times. So one day, hopefully, you might be at Mashable level, but you're not going to get that way if you're not using social media on a regular basis. And the regular basis as a beginner would be once a week. Um, and we'll see how we can get strategies to, to accomplish that. And so if we look at any particular post that they published, there's usually some sort of teaser text, probably a graphic, a little bit more of a snippet. Their whole article, their whole 500-word article is not on Google+. Their 500-word article is back on Mashable.com. They have a website, Mashable.com. If you click on any article, it takes you back to Mashable.com, that specific article, where you can read the whole article and all the details. Imagine if they, if they were a business. Imagine if they were you know, a web design company. They could publish content about how to set up WordPress. But they're not going to put all the 20 steps there. They're going to have a snippet that entices people to go back to the main website where then there it would show you everything. And for some amount of people that follow that link, that's all that they need. For some amount of people, they will say, this is hard. Oh, there's a button that says hire us. And they get a new client. So this is going back to that Bed Bath & Beyond coupon. It's great that 10,000 people in San Diego got it, but let's say only 500 people actually used it. That's fine. 500 customers that went to go buy that item to get the 20% off and ended up buying three more things. So we're going to get traffic from the social networks back to our website because that's where you can accomplish your ultimate goal. Um, at the moment, you cannot sell your product directly on Google+, or Twitter, or Facebook, or Instagram. You can only advertise it. Eventually you'll be able to sell there. All of these companies are currently testing that. You can actually buy something through a tweet from Amazon, but we're not Amazon level. And Pinterest is experimenting with giving some companies the ability to sell a product right from a pin. So for all intents and purposes at the moment, you cannot sell your products, you cannot have people subscribe to your newsletter, you cannot book a catering event, etc., etc., from your social networks. You have to do it on your website, where you have your shopping cart, your newsletter, sign-in button, your phone number for them to call you. So that's the point, in a nutshell, of all of our point of all of our purpose to be on social media. Yes, you can share the latest funny cat pictures, but if that's in service of getting them to go back to your website to hire you as a good veterinarian, great. So I came back here to view this and whatever they're trying to accomplish on their site, which oftentimes it's to have you look at the ads and click and they get money. Um, they, are, they can accomplish it on their site, whatever your goal is on your site. So in another article down here, same thing, a preview, I click, I see the whole, the whole article itself. Yes? So you're saying we would like try to get an, our article posted on Mashable? Nope. I'm saying that you're going to be posting 
content on your Google Plus profile, and that's going to drive traffic back to your website. So we're seeing here that there's these articles, these posts, these previews, and then there's these interactions. For example, the rock saves Frenchy puppy from drowning in the pool. And so what happened was this has three possible interactions. On Facebook, to use something familiar, on Facebook, if you find something that you enjoy on Facebook, what can you do about it? You can click the like button. Google Plus has a like button, but it's called a plus one button. And right now, this shows that 272 people have clicked plus one. So it's gone to 272. So people that have an account on Google Plus have clicked on the plus button, because if I try to click on it, they'll say, okay, join Google Plus or log into Google Plus. We'll get there. But the people that are on Google Plus have clicked on that to show a like, that they've enjoyed that post. That doesn't necessarily mean that they then also clicked to read the whole article. Maybe that's enough for them to like it, the picture of a smiling rock and, and puppies. And so they click plus. The next level up of interaction would be this, this little arrow. If you're on Facebook and someone, and you see that, you see something enjoyable on Facebook, you could plus one, uh, you could like it, you can also share it you can continue to spread that post to more people on Facebook. You can share it. Google Plus has the same thing, the share button, that little arrow. So this shows that 31 people on Google Plus have shared this with their followers. So this has reached a few more people. 31, 31 people directly, and then there could be friends of friends of friends that also see it. And the next level of interaction is a comment. So right here, this shows, on this particular one, 13 comments. So people are saying, Rock, sire, you the man. And then so this one, so dogs jumped? Not sure. Wow. Or woo. So people are, people are commenting. That's another social media interaction. You can do that on Facebook as well. You see something that you enjoy on Facebook, you write a comment. So those are the three interactions that basically are common to all the networks. They might have different names. It's a plus one on Google+. Plus. It's a like on Facebook. It's a favorite on Twitter. Uh, it's a heart or a like on Pinterest, etc., etc. They all have a different name for the same thing, the same three actions. Like it, share it, comment. And in my opinion, their value goes in that order. Like, share, comment. Uh, the lowest interaction is the plus one. It's not the worst, it's just the lowest, because the worst is nothing at all. I could totally ignore this and move on. That's the worst. Nothing, no interaction. No one cared. The next level up is that I can click a plus one and then move on. What else is new? Oh, I like that. Plus one that. Move on. I like that. Plus one. Move on. It's kind of disposable. A like a plus one, you just, you just pass it by. It's a little bit more effort, we'll see later, to click the share button because you actually have to select how to share it, how to spread it to more people. So that's a little more effort. And then the next level up, hopefully, you're going to be um, then writing something a little more meaningful than just good, but you can be adding to the conversation meaningfully. That's the next level. The highest level, actually, we'll get to this one later, is follow. Because let's say, eventually, when we create our profiles, I have a Google Plus account. I'm going to be, uh, I always use this fictional company, Victor's Bakery. Let's say I've got a bakery, and I'm on Google Plus. I still want people to come to my shop to buy those cookies. I can't sell a cookie on Twitter. I can't sell a cookie on Facebook. I have to sell it either on Main Street or on my website. But the more followers I get, I can post. Sale this Saturday at victorsbakery.com. Use this coupon. Some of my followers 
most of my followers probably are gonna say nice and move on but some of them are gonna say excellent and click on the link to use the coupon and buy the product so a social media interaction which is ephemeral which is not real it says dots on a screen results in me selling a cupcake that's obviously the best case scenario and to get from that to the sale is, is can be complicated but the more followers we have the more we increase the prob probability the possibility of getting those sales or subscriptions or donations or whatever you're trying to do online so that's why the highest level is a follow because here 5.3 million people have chosen to follow Mashable because they love their content and they want to keep up to date with it and if I was a bakery I would love to have 5 million followers because some amount of them let's say even 1% are going to follow through 5,335,364,000 I'm not good at math, but what's 1% of 5,335,064? Mm -hmm. A lot of people. So even 1% Yeah, great. By uh, 53,000. Only 53,000 people buy the product. So obviously, if I have 5 million people, that's 53,000 possible sales. Uh, so if I've only got 500 followers, what's 1% of 500? Five? Five sales? It's still good, better than zero sales. So that's why companies try to get likes and follows and all of that, to build an audience, to build an audience that cares about what they're posting about, so that that 1% of people that actually follow through creates a viable business. So that's the highest level. When we create our Google+, Plus, we want plus ones and shares and comments, but we want the most follows. And those lower interactions will lead to the follows. And the more follows that I have, the more I can reach that goal of 1% of my followers actually following through. That's a good goal to have, only 1%. Obviously, I would want 50% of all my followers to be engaged, but it just doesn't work that way. Social media is so disposable. I can get on here and see some stuff on Twitter and then like it and put it away and move on with my life. And lots of people, most people are going to be like that. That 1% of people that actually follow through all the way, those are the people that really, really matter for your business. And the more followers you have, that 1% matters more. So we'll do one more thing and then we'll take a break. Let's just compare Mashable's Google Plus presence with their Facebook presence. Because as I said, they're a company that's on all the networks. So now go to facebook.com slash Mashable. Facebook.com slash Mashable. So this is another social network. You're going to see similarities. There's an icon or a logo, like Google+. Plus. There's some sort of top eye-catching graphic, like Google+. Plus. You've got something called the timeline about videos, photos, kind of like Google+. Plus. They call it posts instead of a timeline, perhaps. There's about photos, YouTube, because YouTube, if you didn't know, is a Google product. And Google Plus is a Google product. They're linked together. So you get a free YouTube account if you create a, if you create a Google Plus account. And on month two, we will talk about using YouTube, creating videos and such. So we've got posts. This was 26 minutes ago. And apparently there was some sort of big Apple event today I didn't hear. And um, they're posting a bunch of content also, th two hours ago, one hour ago. 
And so again, they've got a staff room of, of people posting to to this account. We will talk about, we will see how we can get other people to help you to post to your account because if you're if you're trying to run your business and do the payroll and now you've got to do social media, it'll be hard. But you can get managers, you can get other people access to your account with their login credentials for them to also help you manage the account. We'll see how to do that. You can do that on most of the networks. Um, and if we look at the top, uh, Mashable has 3.2 million likes. On Google Plus, they had 5.3 million likes. Even though Google, even though uh, Facebook is the largest social network, the larger of the two, notice more people care about them and follow them on Google Plus than Facebook. Just because it's the largest network doesn't mean you'll get the most activity on it de facto. It really depends on what you're doing and what your audience is. And we'll talk about that each network has a particular character, demographic, and audience. So if you're trying to do the same thing on all your networks, you might not be reaching the right people. Because we'll talk about that. More people are like this on that network, and more people are like that on this network. We'll talk about what the demographics skew toward on each network. But here we're seeing less people are interacting or have engaged or have liked, have followed Mashable on Facebook than on Google+. And this also has the same sort of the same sort of three interactions. We've got likes. This says blah blah blah. 135 have liked this. It's got 24 shares and 43 comments. So I am seeing a lot of interaction, less followers, um, <clears throat> one is not better than the other, but it could have been that they have less followers, but since it's been shared, it reached more people. And so, lastly, let's compare with Mashable's Twitter account, twitter.com slash Mashable. So they've got Mashable.com but they're also on these three. Actually, we'll look at Pinterest also in a moment, I forgot. But they're on these three, and they've got a presence here, profiles, same sort of thing, different kind of graphic at the top, but then we've got a logo, a biography, and so forth. Up at the top, 5.75 million followers. So more followers than Google+, and then Facebook. And then they're, they're posting their content, are you seeing the exact same content on all three networks? No. There might be variations on the content, but you should see that they're posting different content, and ideally you should do that too. Post different things on the different networks because it's different audiences. And yes, it will be triple the work because you're going to post something different on each network. But as a beginner, I'll show you techniques where you can post to all the networks easily at once. And as a beginner, it's okay to start off posting the same thing to all the networks. But ideally, you do want to target your message for each audience. If I uh, start to talk to someone who is a dog person about cat stuff, they might not care. Or if I'm talking to a cat person about dog stuff, they might not care. Not the right audience. So same thing with all of these networks. We'll talk about the demographics, and we will see which one might be better for you to focus on, because it will be a lot of work. The job of social media manager is a real job that people can get paid a lot of money for. All of these big companies, like uh, McDonald's and Nike and uh, uh, the White House, which is not a company, but all of these, all of these organizations, governments and everything, they have a staff of social media people that do this eight hours a day. And get paid well for it and get benefits and all of that because this is a job, a full-time job, social media. It's a job to make that hilarious dog tea party picture because look at the results. 48 retweets, 49 favorites which are like the likes or the plus ones and the retweets right here are the shares and I wish Twitter would 
do this, they might do it eventually. I hope so. They don't tell you how many they don't tell you how many comments. Comments, shares, likes, different words, different names. But that's a comment, a reply. It doesn't tell you how many until you actually uh, click the, the, the tweet. And here we go. So Sylvia replied, and Lou replied, and Dealey replied. I don't know why they don't give you a number right there. They should. I don't think it's that hard to program, but what do I know? So these are the social interactions on Twitter. Very, very reminiscent of Facebook and Google Plus and Pinterest and LinkedIn and YouTube, just in different names, different icons, different positions. But the purpose of all of that ultimately is get followers. And the purpose of that is not only to give us a good ego boost, but to also give us an audience that 1% of them will be engaged enough to keep my business running. Okay, and then lastly, for real, then we'll take a break. Pinterest. Pinterest.com slash Mashable. And Mashable is, uh, Pinterest is going to look completely different from the other networks in that it's much more graphically focused. You get a wall full of graphics in nice tiles. That's the big innovation of Pinterest. It's much more focused on graphics. We'll talk about how to set it up and use it and its demographics and all of that. But Pinterest visually looks different from the others. The other three are kind of blending together, aren't they, unfortunately? Twitter wants to look more like Facebook because Facebook is so popular. Google Plus wants to look like Facebook because Facebook is so popular. But not Pinterest. They're, gonna, they're saying, we're going to look like Pinterest because we're Pinterest. And Twitter used to look like Twitter. Now it looks a little bit more like Facebook. And so did Google Plus. So I don't know, maybe Google, maybe Pinterest will one day look more like Facebook. I hope not. But this is a, this is their, this is their Pinterest profile. They have 1.4 million followers, so not as many. But they've got content, they've got followers, they've got pins and likes and repins and all of that, which we'll talk about what that all means, of course. But it's really going to recommend you to sign up for Pinterest. People then ask me sometimes in these classes, well, do I even need a website? Why don't I just manage my whole business on Facebook? The problem with that, again, is that you cannot accomplish all of the goals you're trying to accomplish. At the moment, you cannot sell your products on Facebook. You can only advertise them. And probably in the future you will be able to. I don't know when. You're going to probably be waiting a while for that to happen. So you still do want a website. That's where they can see where you're going to have your next art exhibit where you're going to sell your subscriptions, where you're going to sell your ebook, where you're going to get hired as a dog walker, etc. All of these social networks are going to be advertising for that. And the more followers you get on them, the more potential customers you can have. Question? Is there no legal reason? It's just that each company themselves decides what to do with its service. You know, if you post something in the penny saver, which you can't anymore because they went out of business, but if you posted something on the penny saver, you're not actually selling it on the penny saver. You're selling it, you know, face to face or at your business or whatever. They're just a facilitator. But they're going to say you cannot post escort services on the penny saver. So they've decided what can and can't go on their penny saver. These Social networks actually decide what can and can't go onto it. It's pretty lenient what can go onto it, but there is going to be things such as no hate speech, no extreme violence, no bullying, stuff like that. But it's not really legal purposes. It's just that they have decided what they, you can do on their network. Because ultimately, it's all their network. Even though it's your content, it's their network. They're giving you a platform for it. That's a kind of different can of worms. Amazon, uh, even something like Etsy, right? You're selling products through Amazon, eBay, Etsy. That's a different kind of thing. And in a sense, you can kind of use Etsy kind of as a social network. It's kind of built in with marketing as well as selling Amazon to some degree because you've got comments and star ratings and so forth. But 
each one of those is a different kind of topic. Uh, can't quite get into it, but uh, each one provides you some sort of platform for a particular purpose. Most of these networks for a form of marketing and those other sites for selling your product. So in theory you could then, okay, maybe you don't really need a website. Maybe you can set up on Etsy. But Etsy and Amazon and eBay take a commission from selling your products. So again, if you set it up on your own website, you don't pay anyone a commission. You keep all of your income. So that was our big look at the four networks we'll talk about this month. We'll take a break and when we come back we will create a Google Plus profile together. I'll turn the printer back on if you want a copy of the syllabus. We'll do 10 minutes. It's 1.41. We'll be back at 1.51.